Hi everyone, we are on um, experiment 11, step 2, and this step called for us to keep the original circuit from step 1 on the board and reproduce it in a modified fashion for the step 2. Uh, unbeknownst to me, I originally had created the step 1 circuit in the middle of the board, so I had to move the entire thing up the board in order to make space. So this is the step two circuit, and because we are dealing with um, a speaker in this setup, I am going to grab the camera and uh, hand hold it for part of this so that we can put the camera right up to the speaker because it is a very faint sound that we are listening for. But before I do that, I will explain what is different about this circuit. So in the first circuit, um, we pretty much, you know, described everything that there was, including the put and how the capacitor functioned. Uh, this is the 2.2 uh, microfarad uh, capacitor, not the 22 one, FYI. So if we turn the power on right now, this will flash about once a second. This circuit has a very small 47 nanofarad capacitor which is the equivalent of 0 0.0047 microfarads. So that's a lot smaller than the 2.2 .2 microfarad capacitor here. So bearing that in mind, if we have a much smaller capacitor based on what we learned last step, that this will charge and discharge at a much faster rate. So what we need to also look at is the fact that there is a resistor on the cathode pin of our uh, put. And we are doing that to limit the amount of current that is flowing to our loudspeaker. So now I did not have to figure these values out because the book told me if I had to figure these out I would definitely be a little bit more uh, slow at putting these things together because I'd probably need to put these through some simulation softwares to make sure that like the amount of current getting to any one area doesn't violate the ratings of the particular component where you know like the put here, the loudspeaker here, things like that. So, so what we're expecting to hear in the speaker is a very fast, you know, equivalent of a light flashing, but in this case we can't, you know, hear a light flashing really, but we can hear the speaker go, you know, doot, 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 at the speed that is controlled by this much smaller capacitor. So, and based on step two, the actual decibel level <clears throat> output of the speaker will be very low. We will then move on in later steps to amplify that. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can pop this camera off the tripod. And once I turn this on, one sec here. Need to kinda try to do many things with one hand here. I'm going to turn that on, and I'm going to put the camera right up next to this speaker. And listen if you can. So you should hear a faint buzz. And you can see that the other... The other light is still, should be still flashing. So, yeah, there should be a really light buzz. Now, when I turn this off, what I noticed last time when I turned it off is that this actually gets higher as it's um, losing its charge on the capacitor. So, I'm going to try to reach over and turn the bar off again. And uh, listen up. It's 
So hopefully that was audible on this on this uh, recording, but we'll find out. So needless to say, I think we explained why um, we're hearing what we're hearing. And in the next step, we will be amplifying it so that we can uh, we can more clearly hear it. Um, one of the points that the book made was the human eye is not capable of picking up such a fast oscillation as that which is controlled by this capacitor. I think it said Let's see, let me check. It said, um, right, so it's saying that the, uh, the LE, if we were to have an LED on this circuit based on the differences in capacitors, it would be fl flashing about 500 times faster than this light, which would, in, to our eyes, pretty much look like it's just lit constantly because I think I think like going back to, to like uh, cinematography facts I think you know most film is either filmed in 24 frames per second or 30 and the reason for that is as much beyond that the human eye doesn't really pick up on it so along those same same sorts of principles there comes a point where our eye just cannot pick up on the fact that the lights flickering on and off but our ears are apparently capable of picking up um, frequencies up to 10,000, you know, oscillations per second and beyond, according to the book. So that's pretty cool to know that our ears can pick up oscillations or frequencies much, you know, much higher than our eyes. So, hence the speaker. So I will see you guys on step three.